Hello, everybody. Today, we are presenting our Harvard CS249 file project, and it's entitled Air Guitar, using TinyML to identify complex gestures. So gesture recognition is a common application of machine learning, and it's, as it said, as the name implies, to basically identify gestures, whether it be body, whether it be the movement of the body or hand motions, as you can see in the images to the left. Now, we wanted to see and explore deeper, we explore deeper of how TinyML could be used in this field. So if you look to the right, you can see someone playing an air guitar. And basically, we wanted to take this to the next level where, how about instead of someone just playing, simply trying to mimic the motion to the guitar, where when they try to mimic it, they actually play a guitar. So that was the premise of our project. And this is what we want to explore in deeper detail. So for background on this, if you think, if you think about, if you think about it, playing an air guitar is essentially just recognizing the gestures, whether it be the, whether it be the strumming or the chord or finger positions along the neck of the guitar, essentially at its core is just recognizing the positions of your hand and the motion of it. So for this one, we did a similar prop. We did a similar assignment from in the course regarding the hand washing movements. And we wanted to use this assignment and build upon it. Now, to help us with this, since we will be adding additional motion, which in this case is recognizing the finger, recognizing the finger positions, we did some research and we were able to find additional work on this, where we used their models and built up upon it. Now, to do this, we had to design the hardware fire from from scratch, since there was nothing, since there wasn't any premise for this, we could find online. So here, the main microcontroller unit is the TNC 4.1, namely because it was able to output audio playback audio files. Now, if you look at the top right corner, you can see there's the audio amplifier, and this this enables us to play out that this play out the audio file. Now, if you go down below, you can see the IMU and a series of flex sensors, and the IMU here classifies the strumming motion and the flex sensors is used to classify the finger positions, essentially what chords is the user holding. Now to aid, now as I've mentioned that this, there has been no premise for this project or data we could find with this. So we needed to collect and process our own data. So for the IMU, for the IMU data, essentially we collected linear acceleration data for about 0.5 seconds. And 0.5 seconds is what we measured to be a strum. And this data is acceleration data from the X, Y, and Z axis. Now, in regards to the chord processing one, for the chord model, there are, for chords, it's mainly determined by the positions of your four fingers, everything but the thumb. And here we, add, we use flex sensor data as a proxy for, to determine your finger position. Yeah, so in this process, um, to find the most highly performant model, we tried a lot of different possibilities. Um, so starting as sort of a baseline, we did um, for strumming classification, a fully connected model. Um, a key thing to note is that we normalized um, not over all possible IME values, um, but over the IME values that we got in our data set. And similarly, when we moved on to flex sensors, because we found this was more um, performant. Um, so you can kind of see that with validation accuracy is a little bit low and so there's room for improvement on um, the following slide. Um, we moved to strumming classification with a CNN model, which was much more highly performant, just got a few false positives. Um, and then we moved on, on the next slide, you know, to um, flex sensor classification This is starting with a fully connected model. Um, you can kind of see that, for example, a B chord um, frequently gets misclassified as an E. Um, that's because they only differ in their index finger position. Um, and so trying to help us distinguish better between these kinds of chords, um, we moved on in the next slide to a CNN model. Um, both were kind of pretty good in terms of accuracy, but the CNN was able to remove a lot of the um, false classifications um, and give us overall much more higher accuracy. So now uh, we can see how all of these pieces fit together. So I'm going to show you this working in practice. Um, right now I have on my right hand glued to my glove is the IMU. 
and then on my left hand, uh, a glove with the four flex sensors uh, duct taped to my fingers. And then they're both connected to this beautiful Teensy board, which is running our code, um, which is running two models simultaneously, one for the classifying the IMU data, and one for classifying the flex sensor data. And what it does is like, it runs in a loop um, and it waits for a specific threshold uh, for acceleration. After that, it gets data from the IMU and then it classifies it into either a strum or no strum. If it is a strum, then it starts collecting data from the flex sensors and then classifies them into the chord that I'm holding um, and then plays that specific chord. So we can see all of these pieces interacting together. Uh, here, uh, I already have the, um, the code uploaded to the Teensy. I'm just gonna run our Python code that interfaces with it. Now we can see, first of all, we can see the, um, the IMU model running. Um, it detects like if I, if I do like hand motions like this or kind of like the hand gestures that we did like no strumming motions, uh, we see that we get a no strum classification. But if I strum, then we get a strumming classification. And if it classifies as a strum, then it starts like the, the other models invoked on the flex sensor data, and then it plays um, a sound according to which position I'm holding. So for example, um, this position is an A chord. We see it plays an A chord. This position is a B chord. It plays a B chord. Um, this position is an F chord. And of course, um, this position, my favorite position is a D minor chord and it plays a D minor chord. Um, and for example, like there are many uh, chords that we can play this way. Uh, we can play around with it however we want. Um, so we can see this working in practice. So um, in conclusion, this project has been tumultuous in many ways. There's been many ups and downs in both the software and the hardware. Uh, but we're proud that in the end, after many trials, we were able to get something working. Um, and now, even if you don't have a guitar, um, you can play your favorite song. And with that, <laughs> we'd like to thank you so much uh, for everything you've done for us this week and really enjoyed the course. Thank you from the Air Guitar team. Goodbye.